Coming up next on 90s at noon, the body of a teenager not seen since December 1st was found inside a burned out home in Park County. A homicide investigation is now underway. Three students are dead after a shooting at this high school in New Mexico. We will have the latest information. Minnesota Senator Al Franken announced he's leaving the U.S. Senate amid sexual harassment allegations. We'll hear what he said on the Senate floor this morning. And there were more airdrops, but the fires burning in the Los Angeles area are still out of control. And hurricane strength winds are not helping anything. Nine News at Noon is next. This is Nine News. Hi everyone, I'm Gary Shapiro. Thanks for joining us. We now know that strange disappearance of a 17-year-old girl in Park County is a homicide. The Park County Sheriff says Maggie Long's body was found in the burned out home of the Long family there. The Sheriff's Office said at the time that the fire was arson. But the district attorney asked for and was granted a gag order in the case, so we didn't know what happened to Maggie. It all happened on December 1st in the Long home, which was on County Road 43 in Bailey. The sheriff now says anyone who saw anything suspicious there that day should contact them. They also said there will be no further comment or details on the status of the investigation. We are following breaking news out of New Mexico. The San Juan County Sheriff says three students are dead following a shooting at a high school there. That includes the shooter. It was at Aztec High School. Students boarded buses for another location where they're now being reunited with parents. The school is in the Four Corners region and is near the Navajo Nation. A fight between an Adams County deputy and a suspect ended with a fatal shooting. The sheriff's office says the suspect was trying to flee. Nine News reporter Eddie Randall's in Adams County where a news conference just ended a short time ago. Good afternoon. We're in Adams County where we recently wrapped an interview with the Adams County Sheriff. He was talking to us about an overnight officer involved shooting. The Adams County Sheriff says that shooting all happened after a deputy was finishing a check welfare call. They say after that call was wrapped up, the deputy then heard some kind of noise and disturbance coming from a neighboring apartment complex. They say the deputy went to that apartment complex, but his plan was to stay and wait for backup, but he saw a suspect suspect leaving that area as that deputy tried to approach that suspect. That's when the deputy and the suspect got into a physical fight. It uh, resulted in injuries to the deputy. Uh, both the suspect and the deputy were transported to the hospital. The deputy or the, the deputy has received um, some some injuries that we're not real sure uh, other than head and neck injuries how much more sustained injuries uh, the deputy has received and the suspect was pronounced dead uh, there at the hospital. The Adams County critical incident team has been called to lead this investigation and the sheriff tells us they will be going back to that neighborhood where this shooting took place, canvassing that neighborhood, working to talk to neighbors to find out if they can get any more information. Now that deputy ha is still in the hospital where he is being treated for neck injuries and head injuries and the sheriff says he they don't know how serious those injuries are, but they are working to speak with that deputy and get more information to what happened. We will stay in touch with them and as soon as we get more information, we will pass it along to you. Reporting in Adams County, I'm Eddie Randall. Eddie, thanks. We obviously don't have the name of the uh, sheriff's officer, but he is on paid administrative leave pending that investigation. Embattled Democratic Senator uh, Al Franken of Minnesota is bowing to the demands that he stepped down. He announced this morning that he is resigning as a member of the U.S. Senate. This after a former congressional aide said he tried to forcibly kiss her in 2006. She was the seventh woman to publicly allege sexually inappropriate behavior. While Franken agreed to step down, he denied that latest allegation. And he talked about the Republicans who have faced similar or worse allegations. I, of all people, am aware that there is some irony in the fact that I am leaving while a man who has bragged on tape about his history of sexual assault sits in the Oval Office, and a man who has repeatedly preyed on young girls' campaigns for the Senate with the, with the full support of his party. Franken did say that he vows not to step away from public service. 
Well, we're seeing some snow in the high country today as we look at our camera from the tunnels, but in Denver, no snow yet. It has been a long time since we've seen any. Today marks 58 days with no measurable snow in the Metro Denver area. Becky joins us now and I'm guess we're not going to see any measurable snow this time either, right? You know, there's a small chance that we get maybe a trace out there and that'll be flurries. I think at best for Denver, especially out at DIA where they take those official measurements. Uh, but it's a small window this afternoon where most of our snow is expected west and south of town. So let's go ahead and take a live look outside. This is downtown Denver where we do have partly cloudy skies out there now, but it is chilly. 30 degrees outside nine news 33 out at DIA. It's 38 for Greeley and 36 for Fort Collins. So today we've got this week disturbance that's pushing through. It's brought us the cold. We're hoping for a little bit of snow. Right now, the snow is barely coming down in northern Colorado, so you can see that disturbance as it edges into parts of the state. It is not, unfortunately, going to be much and may leave most of you with just some cloudy skies through the afternoon and temperatures in the middle to upper 30s. We are, however, still looking at that chance for flurries after about 4 p.m. today, lasting into the evening, and then after that, the dry weather pattern continues. In fact, we warm up again for the weekend, so no big promising snowstorms, even rain at this point. I think right. we'll take anything headed our way. Need some moisture. All right, Becky, thank you. We'll check back with you in a bit. Right now, five major, major fires are burning in Southern California from Beverly Hills to Ventura. The fires are so big right now, you can see them from space. Thousands of people have been forced to evacuate. NBC News reporter Gina Kim has the latest from Ventura. Throughout Southern California, the highest possible wildfire danger level was issued for the first time, the purple flag. Fire officials said they haven't seen this combination of fierce winds and extreme dry conditions in decades. The brush burning index, that's a number that we rate the threat of a brush fire, is 296. This is the highest number I've ever seen in my career. More than 4,000 firefighters are on the front lines fighting the flames from the ground and the sky. Four separate fires continue to burn out of control from Ventura to Los Angeles, burning hundreds of buildings and threatening thousands more, including those in the exclusive Bel Air and Brentwood neighborhoods. Residents whose homes have so far escaped the flames aren't taking any chances. Beth Raji is putting out hot spots around her home with a garden hose. It got really close, too close. We are just so fortunate. Other residents barely got out with the clothes on their backs. We could see the flames coming up, and that was that was it. We were out of here. We didn't take anything. God wanted him, and I guess he wanted my house, too. <laughs> the fire destroyed Irene Quebman's home and the urn containing her late husband's ashes. I ran out of tears. There's no more. If the fire proves unmanageable, officials say they may have no choice but to focus on evacuating over firefighting. Gina Kim, NBC News, Ventura, California. 200 homes and buildings are destroyed or damaged with 12,000 structures still under threat and about 200,000 people are evacuated. We have some breaking news from Golden. Golden Fire Department reports there is a climber whose rope snapped and he fell into an old mine shaft. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is on a hogback toward the north end of Rooney Road in Golden. Golden tells us that he had a friend with him and the friend guided rescuers to his location. He is as much as 300 feet down. Golden Fire says they have verbal but not visual contact with the climber. He told rescuers he has a leg injury. They are preparing for a technical rope rescue. We will let you know how it goes. Cars in 2018 will come with brighter headlights and more bells and whistles, but the attention to safety uh, at, that the Insurance Institute has them taking notice. We'll tell you who got the highest awards for safety of the new cars coming up. Will United States athletes compete in the Winter Olympic Games in Pyeongchang, South Korea? The U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, shocked many people when she said that's an open question if U.S. athletes will be there. The comments were made after North Korea said a nuclear war with South Korea is a matter of when and not if. The IOC has repeatedly said the games will be safe. The last boycott of Olympic Games by the United States was in 1980 when President Carter announced the U.S. would not be taking part in the Moscow Games. 
Well, are you in the market for a new car? The Institute for Safety for Highway Safety says that the new 2018 models scored pretty high when it comes to safety. 62 cars and SUV er, SUVs earn the top safety pick award. 15 of those earn the very highest award, and that's despite tougher criteria requiring better headlights and enhanced passenger side protection. Leading the way this year for the most safety pick plus awards are Hyundai and Subaru. The Kia Soul and Forte also got pretty high marks. What you're seeing with, with those two companies is that they are responding very quickly when they learn uh, new ways that they need to modify their vehicles to protect their customers. And we have a full list of all of the top rated models. Just go to Ninews.com. The FDA just approved a new drug for diabetes, but it has another benefit that may make a huge difference for some people. We will talk to a pharmacist about how it might work coming up next. We're updating some breaking news now out of Golden, where a climber has fallen into an old mine shaft. This is a live look from Sky 9 at the rescuers. Golden Fire says the climber's rope snapped. He is on a hogback toward the north end of Rooney Road in Golden. Rescuers say he's about 300 feet down right now. They've been able to talk to him. They can't see him yet. He told the rescuers that he has a leg injury, so now they're getting ready for a technical rope rescue. They'll send a rescuer and a rope down there in the mine shaft to get him. And as we get more information, we, of course, will let you know how this ends up. New at noon, the sports doctor who admitted molesting gymnasts and keeping a staggering collection of child pornography has been sentenced to 60 years in prison. Larry Nasser was sentenced today. Nasser worked at Michigan State University and USA Gymnastics, where Olympic athletes were trained. Investigators found more than 37,000 images of child porn on his electric devices. His lawyers say that he deeply regrets his crimes. Olympian Michaela Maroney, one of the first gymnasts to step forward, has called him a monster. Colorado State Representative Lori Sane forgot and took her loaded gun out of her purse before to take her loaded gun out of her purse before going through security at DIA. That's according to her lawyer. She was in jail for 24 hours. Today, Sane is out on bond. And a judge did grant her permission to leave the state on that trip that was sh uh, cut short with the arrest. TSA say the loaded gun saw the loaded gun in x-ray screening and alerted Denver police. Now others who have had guns at TSA checkpoints have not been arrested, so it's not clear why Representative Sane was. Her release was granted in exchange for a promise to attend all future court hearings. Governor John Hickenlooper urged Congress to act soon when it comes to getting funding for the CHIP program here in Colorado. It offers cheaper health insurance for some 9 million children and pregnant mothers around the country who make just above the amount required for Medicaid but can't afford private insurance. If Congress does not authorize funding in the next two weeks, those people will lose coverage. The FDA has just approved a new diabetes drug, one that has an additional benefit. It apparently helps with weight loss. Joining us to talk about that now is Sam Ellis. He is from the CU Skagg School of Pharmacy. Thanks for coming in, Sam. Thank you for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. So talk a little bit about this uh, drug. How does it differ from other drugs? Well, this drug actually works to mimic one of your own body's hormones. It's called a glucagon-like peptide 1. Uh, it belongs to this drug class. There's actually other drugs in the class, so there are similar agents. But this drug, what makes it unique is it's given once a week. Um, and also, it has pretty significant weight loss as well as its ability to lower blood sugar. So it's an injection that you get once a week? It is. So it's a <coughs> once a week injection. Patient would, would give it uh, one day and, and try and keep it on that day every week. Now, uh, who, who should probably take this drug when it comes out? So it's indicated for patients with type 2 diabetes who are probably already on first-line therapy. So this would be reserved for second-line therapy uh, or people who are overweight or obese along with their diabetes. And it is uh, pricey. It's $676 for four to six weeks. Uh, will insurance cover this, do you think? Um, yeah, it does have cardiovascular benefits, so I think insurances will, will cover this when it comes out. It won't be in pharmacies until January. Um, but usually the way the drug companies work is that they'll give you discount cards early on. So my guess is there'll be a discount card so people can try this and then insurances will slowly pick it up thereafter. And you think a lot of people probably want to take advantage of this? 
I, I do. I think the nice thing about this drug and, and a few other drugs in, that we use for diabetes is that it does lower cardiovascular risk in people that have underlying disease. And so that makes it very unique compared to other diabetes drugs. Sam Ellis from CU, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it very much. All right, that's the latest on that. We'll take a break and be right back. U.S. athletes hoping to represent the country at the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang are in Colorado right now working to earn their spot. Snowboarders, including Sean White, are training at Copper Mountain ahead of the U.S. Grand Prix this week, the uh, first of two Olympic qualifying events in Colorado. The Big Air and the Half Pipe qualifiers will happen today and tomorrow. The finals will be held over the weekend. Matt Renu is going to be up there and we'll have report live on our morning show tomorrow morning. Becky joins us now. They better dress warm up there. Oh my it's goodness. It's chilly. It is chilly. Temperatures today in the 30s. We're going to be warming up a little over the next couple of days. And this dry weather pattern ugh, just continues. We'll see a few flurries maybe this afternoon, late this afternoon and into this evening. Then some clouds tomorrow morning before those clear and it gets windy. 53 are high on Friday, Saturday 59, 61 on Sunday. Broncos are facing the Jets on Sunday. 205 will be kickoff and look at that on a December day. Hmm. 2 p.m. will be at 58 degrees. I know we need the moisture, but boy, that'll be nice. <laughs> yeah. Man, all right. That's it for 9 News at Noon. Have a good day.